John, thanks for joining me today. Nice to be here. Let's talk about Aris Technologies. What does it, it do and what exactly is it? So Aris Technologies is a manufacturer of antimicrobial thermal coatings. So copper in and of itself is inherently antimicrobial. You're seeing this coming into vogue more and more. You're seeing high touch surfaces in places like hospitals, as you'll see on the screen behind us, as well as high touch surfaces in quick serve restaurant spaces and fitness facilities. Funny enough, before I get into it, you'd think a toilet seat was dirtier than a treadmill. You're wrong. A treadmill handle is almost twice as dirty as a public toilet seat. We'll get into that a little bit later, as shocking as it seems. Wow, yeah. incredible. Okay, so how do you bring this product to market and is, and is your product the actual surfaces? Yeah, so essentially what we do is we've got a very globally unique product uh, insofar as we take uh, copper alloys. So the EPA has certified 500 different copper alloys. The minimum threshold is such that it has to contain 65% copper. The reason for that is copper is antimicrobial. At a cellular level, copper actually produces a peroxide which kills any pathogens which set on its surface. Hmm. So we achieve one of the fastest kills in recorded EPA history. Um, it's a very, very functional product. And by virtue of it being a, an alloy, we can actually make it achieve different colors other than that red uh, rose hue that you're used to. Mm -hmm. So what we do is we take uh, any number of these copper alloys, we heat them up to 3,600 degrees Fahrenheit in a contained booth uh, um, with an operator who's in a fully aspirated mask. We do full reclamation, so there's no uh, dust particulate that's, that's lost or any waste whatsoever. And what we do is we bring the copper as close to a gaseous state as we can while still keeping it a liquid. And we have, with the University of Waterloo, developed the first patent for applying 3600 degree heated copper onto plastic without melting the substrate, which, hmm. is, which is the surface. So this is incredibly important when looking at things like hospital bedside rails, toilet seats, the back of the cell phone, uh, your cell phone cover, pens. I mean, literally, we can coat anything made out of plastic, metal, or wood, and uh, it's incredibly durable. Um, and more importantly, uh, it's one of the most powerful antimicrobial agents on the planet. Hmm. Okay, so tell me, how is it that we have not discovered this anti antimicrobial feature about copper in the past? Everybody's well familiar with silver, mm. and it sounds like this copper is even better than silver. Right, so I'll answer the question about silver first. It's very important, the distinction between the antimicrobials. If you look at Kaiser Permanente, one of the largest hospital, if not the largest hospital asset owner on the western seaboard in the United States. They have now banned all chemical antimicrobials and silver by virtue of the fact that it's not effective. Mm. And the only one that they still allow in their hospitals is copper. Mm. The reason for that is the chemical products, no matter what you do, are going to leach off. Products like Microband, for instance, which you'll see on street cars that Bombardier actually used to put on their, on their high touch surfaces. Mm -hmm. You'll see a lot of the handles on the TTC buses, uh, trains, etc. cetera. Uh, and you'll notice that there's almost like a white powderish hue where people have high touch surfaces. Mm -hmm. That's actually the chemical wearing off and coming off on your hand. Wow. And silver is not as effective as an antimicrobial agent because it's only effective in hot and humid environments. So you'll see su uh, silver effectively working in the marketplace, being woven into the armpits in shirts and okay. into socks. Huh. Because when you're stopping odor, essentially what you're doing is killing the microbes that's feasting on the proteins your body's creating. Hmm. So by virtue of having the silver there, it's gonna be effective because it's hot and humid in that area. But if you coat a door handle, a toilet seat, a push plate in silver, it will not be antimicrobial. It's just going to be a regular substrate like stainless steel. Okay. So this has not historically been used in hospitals and in medical facilities, has it? Um, it, it depends on whom you ask. The historical precedent is an interesting one because depending on where your viewers are, uh, a lot of folks from Central and Eastern Asia will note that water, uh, basin, water basins and cooking pots were classically made out of copper. Huh. And the reason for that is they fundamentally knew that copper was antimicrobial. And the unique thing about copper is, is that it doesn't ever have this degenerating effect. It's not like it's a finite product in, by any means. So if you take a 2,000 year old piece of copper or an alloy that's just been refined by any number of the companies that manufacture them. The antimicrobial efficacy today and in 2000 years from now will be identical. Um, so that was something that was kind of known uh, um, uh, in a community level in a, a lot of these smaller, more tribal uh, communities across the world uh, well in advance of the past 500 years. Um, and you'll notice that door handles are made of copper and brass, mostly going up to 1950 to 1960, where we see the index pressure of copper going up. Mm -hmm. And now, um, more specifically, uh, companies in the United States have come out and manufactured products out of solid copper to be antimicrobial. 
So what makes us very different is if you're going to take a door handle or a toilet seat and made it up, make it out of copper, it's going to be incredibly expensive and it's going to be uh, very heavy. Right. It also is going to look like copper, so it's going to patina or, or, or turn uh, green right. uh, and oxidize like you see on the, the hills of Parliament. Which would be weird inside your bathroom. It would bathroom. be kind of strange, right? <laughs> so what we do that's different is we thermally applicate it. So by virtue of doing that, we apply it in a 1 40th of an inch thick coating. Mm. And we can retrofit. So if you look at a hospital in Canada, for instance, and it's important to note, we have a number of other assets right now. We're acquiring more and more. We just bought the second largest hospital headwall manufacturer in Ontario. Uh, so we service uh, provinces. Uh, all the RFPs in all 10 provinces across the country and a lot of northern U.S. states. So we actually install the head wall that goes alongside the bed, hmm. which will hold everything from uh, the gas for the anesthesiologist to the electrical and where all of the care is being administrated. So what we're, what we're currently doing is building our company to be a number one solution for hospital room problems uh, as it relates to ergonomic design and more importantly as it relates to an antimicrobial build that is uh, not cumbersome as it relates to hospitals being built out here hmm. in Canada. So is this going to have an impact then on the problem of, uh, of resistant bacteria and, right. and infective pathogens? that are, you know, you go to the hospital, you come out sick with something that you got at the hospital. Is that right. going to be, is that to mitigate that problem? Well, it's important before answering that question that we point out that this is not a problem that resides with healthcare administrators, doctors, nurses, physiotherapists, occupational therapists, the C-level executives, infectious disease folks. Everybody's working really hard in Canada. They really are. And we see that on the ground level and they're all to be applauded. The problem is a lack of dollars and a lack of genuine care, or I should say, a lack of an economic understanding of how expensive these hospital acquired infections are. So every hospital acquired infection that happens to a patient, either in Canada, the United States, or anywhere around the world, the current in index price in North America is 47,000 USD per patient. Hmm. Last year in Canada, registered, we had 220,000 patients infected, staying in hospital over 10 days, hmm. and we had 8,800 die. Wow. And we believe that the diagnosis rate, or, or at least the registration of somebody saying, hey, look, this person's sick or died by virtue of a, of a hospital-acquired infection, actually only being 15% reported. So those numbers are incredibly higher than that. Hmm. And if you look at right now, uh, it's all over the newspapers. There was a VRE outbreak uh, in Thunder Bay. Uh, I know there's a number of hospitals. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to malign any hospitals or say that some are better than others because I know everybody's working really hard. But there are a number of hospitals where this doesn't go public, where you have these superbugs that are um, antibiotic resistant. And it all happens in the transmission of touching a high touch surface. So for instance, you go into a hospital, you see your aunt, your uncle, whomever it may be, and they're in the hospital bed. You touch the hospital bedside rail. They happen to sneeze and uh, things like MRSA, which happen to breed in our nasal passages, they sneeze in their hand, they touch the, the hospital bedside rail. And then you touch it, give them a kiss or a hug, and you go out and you can touch the door handle. And in less than a minute, that's going to be at the front door. Hmm. Wow. Okay. So how long until this product is sort of the uh, industry standard in Canada, health, Canadian healthcare? We just finished a very successful trial in the um, uh, bone marrow transplant and leukemia uh, ward at Vancouver General Hospital. And we're going to be rolling out over a number of additional hospitals. And we've got a big announcement coming out in Q2, uh, of which we can't quite go into detail yet. But you're going to see a heck of a lot more of our products, not only in hospitals, but also in quick serve restaurant spaces and in fitness facilities. Hmm. So it's, it's very, uh, we, we have a very panoptic view of the industry. And, uh, you know, the, the rollout process for us is one that has been eight years in the making and we're finally at the point now where we're about to go. Um, I don't want to say viral because that's a bad analogy. <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay, John, that's an excellent overview. We're going to come back to you in a couple of quarters to see how you're doing. Thanks for joining me today. My pleasure. Thank you.